I'm George Blystone. Welcome to the W.A. Young and Sons Foundry and Machine Shop located on the Mon River. The shop used to uh, serve as paddle wheelers, steamboats for the coal mines and uh, other coal related industries. The machine shop is run by a gasoline engine. It was run by steam. The overhead belt driven machines all still operate approximately the same way that they did uh, when it was built. Lathes and stuff that made shafts. Uh, this is an arbor press which uh, they made here. This is the wooden pattern to make a sand casting of that piece. Uh, this, like I said, this lathe has a 20-foot bed. Uh, we have a gear chucked up in it now. This is the gasoline power plant we have now to run the overhead belt driven machines. I'm going to start the uh, engine that runs the belt line. This is a milling machine. It has a clutch that operates it, and that gets it spinning. It cuts, it shaves metal uh, with with cutters. Radial arm drill press. What it means by radial arm is it means that it can swivel and go to a lot of different positions. The on and off switch used to be way back there, that knob, and now they've moved it up to where it's a little closer to their work. So that starts, that starts the machine. This raises and lowers the head. You can see that moving possibly. That's about a ton hanging out there. There's the bit. It's an automatic feed up here. This is this is 1870s. Pipe cutter, pipe threader, which if it was mingling in with uh, the rest of the machines, if you had a 20-foot joint of pipe, you couldn't do anything with it. In other words, you had to be able to stretch it from one door to the other one to cut it in half. Okay. Uh, the operation is the same belt. I'm on an idler pulley. This is the on and off switch. Okay. If you, if you could uh, look up there to... I'm going to move that belt to a power pulley and then that turns... There's a universal joint up there and it turn, and that's what turns this belt. And this still cuts pipe and threads pipe just like it did. There's an arc welding machine that's 1921 that was belt driven also. Uh, we think it pretty well might, will run. This was a press for pressing bearings and things. This is a, a wooden pattern that uh, was this part of the machine here. And uh, they must have broken it and we have uh, had to make new parts. This is a casting of the same piece, but it has not been machined. This, they made these stoves here. This is the, this is the door pattern. This is a wooden pattern that uh, was used to make the door. We have the rest of the patterns upstairs. This is Gary Shriver, our blacksmith. Forge and stuff were all added in 1908 uh, to do blacksmith work. All the tools and stuff you see here were left here. In 1900, when W.A. Young built the shop and built the, the uh, pattern shop, 
he built the patterns and they shipped the patterns to Pittsburgh and had them cast, okay? Then he decided that it would be a lot easier and cheaper to do it in-house. So he built this, the foundry. This is the cupola behind me, uh, which was the furnace that melted cast iron. Uh, and uh, the floor that you're standing on, or I'm standing on, is uh, casting sand. They actually dug out pieces of the floor and would uh, uh, put patterns in it and, uh, and pour them right here. These are wooden patterns for coal grates for paddle wheelers, steamboats, okay? Each paddle wheeler would have had a set of these in their boiler and the coal would be thrown on top of it and that's where it would burn. These would burn out very easily uh, because of the cast iron. And uh, so they would bring their, their boat in, of course they'd call ahead and they'd have these ready and they'd pull the old ones out and put these new ones in and be on their way. So, and they'd, re, they'd remelt the old ones and recycle them. So there's, uh, this, this one here is from the uh, Snyder paddle wheeler which was, which, uh, was part of crucible steel and the, the actual boat is still in existence. Welcome to the uh, pattern shop of the W.A. Young and Sons machine shop. This was built in 1900 also, uh, and it's where they made all the patterns. It was these machines here are also overhead belt driven. Now, the patterns, some of them you can recognize. This is called a frog. This is a switch for a locomotive, for a, for a train to, to move from track to track, okay? And, and then we have coal mine size, okay, which were the same thing, but smaller, okay? And they made a lot of these here. We have sash weights. The old windows used to have weights on each side of them to help to counterbalance the, the window. And they made, and of course they use counterbalancing stuff for a lot of different things, but especially sash weight. Coal car wheel. Okay. I don't know whether you can see the patent date and so forth in there. This was, this was from a company that made the coal cars and they sent this wheel, of course they put their name and stuff to continue advertising, they sent this wheel so they could make, we could make wheels here for their coal cars without sending them to wherever it was there they had to go. A lot of this stuff, the gears and things, um, are from paddle wheelers. We don't know what the inside of a paddle wheeler engine house would have looked like. Uh, I'd, I'd like to find out, but that's another story. Um, this is a mighty fine piece of uh, craftsmanship. This has all been carved. Uh, I often ask people what it is, and they take guesses. This is a cast iron stair tread that would go on a set of steps in a factory or somewhere. You know. They also made steam engines. This is half of a piston for a steam engine. And the rod. This is all intricate stuff, you know. This is this had to be machined afterwards, but it had to be pretty close to what it was supposed to be before that. Industrial stuff. This is a floor drain for a factory somewhere. Yep. So they just made just about anything you could imagine here. Table saw and jointer, which had blades here, they could use it for like a planer also. This was the, this was the power 
from down for downstairs. In other words, they would bring the power from the from the engine up by loosening that nut and tightening that bolt, and that would have tightened the belt, and you would have run up. You would have been able to run the pulleys up here. So this was the office and hardware store. Okay, in other words, uh, their clerk worked up here, the money was brought up here, invoices were done here, all that kind of filing stuff. But also, it was the hardware store. And all the hardware is still here, <laughs> which is really neat. You know, those are quarter inch square nuts. Uh, but they did. They made they made all these bolts. They made all the, they they made everything. You know, it wasn't just that they went and had somebody bring it in. You know, because there wasn't anybody to bring it in. All this stuff is um, is stuff like I said that was left here. Uh, they made some of this stuff. This is a this casting piece here was made here. This is for a pitcher pump to draw water, okay? Um, and, and they would have cast that part. Now the leather, they would have got the leathers because uh, I actually have a container that still has the leather in it, <laughs> you know, which is just fabulous stuff. So yeah, they would have, uh, they made keys here. This is a, this is a key cutting machine. I believe it's Yale. These are wrenches for lathes and things. These were cast downstairs. You know. Yep. Uh, pot belly stove stuff. You know, that's a you know little grate. And this is a little cover. You know, they would have cast those here. Just you know. Just anything. They cast. Uh, they did a lot of pipe fittings. They were able to cast them here and and uh, thread them and the whole ten yards. You know. Uh, we're into World War II period. Uh, the men went off to war, and the women came from Pittsburgh to work. Uh, they were apprentices. A lot of them uh, that that knew how to work steel and came here to work while the men went to war. This uh, box behind me was the women's restroom that they built especially for the women that came to, to work here, which I think is kind of a nice, you know, gesture. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, it continued on with women here. I don't think, that, I don't think it ever really ended. The other stuff that uh, happened at the uh, machine shop, they uh, worked on automobiles. Uh, they sold gasoline here in five-gallon cans. Uh, they had a grease pit, which is right in this area. They would have uh, changed oil. Uh, they might have opened your transmission up and uh, made a new gear for you. Uh, they did just all kinds of intricate things to automobiles uh, because it was the only place in town. And uh, so they, they were able to do that. We have some uh, auto parts and stuff over here. They just did, uh, did about anything. This is, uh, this is true made in America. Uh, this, this whole place, there, there's nothing that you can't find that was made in America. Uh, and it was a very powerful thing at one time until the, unfortunately the steel mills left us and uh, it turned into other things. But this, this was real, real made in America stuff.